Hello Retrofans! Today I'd like to talk about a new project I'm working on and uh, before we do so just let's change something on my new presentation. As you can see I've installed a new camera and um, due to the very positive response I've got about my channel introduction I decided to change my setup in a way that um, you will have a face every now and then when I talk about topics and um, basically that's not going to be the case for the whole episodes because actually I have to share this uh, capture input with my C64 input for example so if I'm going to talk about C64 content then um, you won't see me that's um, one aspect of the whole story and I think the main focus will remain my desk and things going on on my desk and uh, therefore I will probably use this more or less for well the opening of my episodes and something like this and um, yes so that's the first test let's see how this is going to work and um, well let's continue with the main topic of this episode and um, basically with the growing base of Ultimate 64 users and the availability of the FPGA set, um, there are, well, a couple of uh, questions, requests, ideas regarding running the FPGA set on the Ultimate 64. And uh, if you are a frequent, um, well, let's say, consumer or visitor of my channel, you know that I spend quite a lot of time running several FPGA SID experiments on uh, the Ultimate 64. I started with uh, the prototype a um, couple of um, months ago already and um, this is indeed a little bit different compared to the final product. And um, oops. <laughs> and um, the main thing is that the Ultimate 64 comes already with an emulated SID, or basically two, but um, there are a couple of people who are not very happy with it, and um, they try to run the FPGA SID on the Ultimate 64. And this is basically not very difficult if you just want to have one SID emulated by the FPGA SID, but if it comes down to the point that you want to have two SIDs emulated by the FPGA SID on the Ultimate 64, it gets a little bit well more complicated. And um, basically the Ultimate 64 does not offer uh, the connection you have available in a normal C64. I am talking about the address line A5 and A8. And um, therefore it's a little bit tricky to get the information required to run the second SID on it. And uh, basically it is indeed a little bit more mm, difficult to get the audio signal of the second SID out of the system, so to say. Basically the FPGA SID is built in a way that you use uh, the cables uh, with the clamps. And uh, basically this is not part of the package, this is just to switch between the configuration, so let's get rid of it. And uh, on a normal C64 basically you would use um, this clamp connected to the AV connector right here to get access to the second SID signal, so to say. But uh, the Ultimate 64 is using this pin already for the RGB signal and it can't be switched off. So even if you're not using RGB, then um, there is some um, signal already on this pin and therefore this is not working. And um, this socket or this type of uh, connector is not built in a way to connect a clamp like this to this pin anyway. Therefore, this is not going to work. Um, you may use uh, the SID tap connector, for example, but this requires an additional adapter as well. And basically with the FPGA SID as it is built, it is um, not possible to feed this signal into the second socket um, because this is already, I, let's call it amplified. 
and it's a di different signal level so to say it's not it's not working and um, the next thing um, even if you have managed to all uh, to, to get this all fixed and um, you're still not happy with it uh, some people had the idea to run even two FPGAs it's on the Ultimate 64 which is basically an interesting idea and um, I say why not but the tricky thing here is that the two circuits are so close together that um, basically from a physical perspective it is a little bit tricky to get all those FPGAs it's squeezed onto the board and uh, you can use some additional sockets for example and then you create some kind of a, a stack to raise the second or the first FPGA set above the second one that's something that works but um, this is kind of uh, not very elegant so to say not very uh, sophisticated and uh, it may not fit in certain cases anyway so and um, Therefore, I spent some time thinking about this problem and decided to create adapter PCBs to exactly address issues caused by this combination. So I'm not blaming the Ultimate 64 or Gideon for as it is. Um, I guess nobody had in mind to run two FPGAs on the Ultimate 64 and I understand that there are some constraints, construction-wise, cost-wise, whatever that led to this design. And um, therefore, this is not a judgment. This is just, let's call it forward thinking, how we can fix this. And um, the first thing I've done is I built an adapter, a small PCB like this, that um, enables us to run the FPGA set as a single instance on the Ultimate 64, but feeding back the audio to the second socket and using all the address configuration of the Ultimate 64 to um, change the base address of the second SID emulated by the FPGA SID. So with this socket, basically, you are not longer required to use uh, the cables and um, you simply, not as simply as I thought, is just have to um, connect the FPGA set with this connect uh, with this uh, adapter, and then you can place this onto those two sockets, and then that's basically all you have to do. Now you got the second set routed through the second socket. You can use the address configuration of the Ultimate 64 configuration menu, and uh, everything is kind of working well. The only thing we need to connect is this little red wire to this small pin here on the PCB to get the information about the so-called chip select signal to the FPGA set. So that's basically the purpose of this first adapter. And um, when I started to work on this project, I had in mind to use this um, adapter on the reloaded mk2 for example as well and therefore i mixed up the, the dimension the, the the distance of the sockets and therefore i had to uh, cheat a little bit and um, well it's a prototype actually it's still in development but um, i will make this available as a version for the fpgas uh, for the ultimate 64 as well as for the reloaded mk2 I have no idea how I'm going to publish this, but uh, it's going to be some kind of, uh, let's call it open source or something like this. I have no idea about open source at all. I'm just using this as kind of a phrase that I have no problems if someone is going to build this stuff uh, on its own. So therefore the PCB layout uh, will be somewhere kind of downloadable from some ever source i have no idea anyway but um before i go and finalize the design and go to order the first uh, let's call it final pcbs i want to hear your thoughts about this if you want to want to have 
special features if you want to have something additional i don't know um, we came up with the idea to um, even make the pcb a little bit bigger use the sit tab connector as well and may maybe adding a 3.5 uh, stereo jack to the pcb as well so that you can connect your um, 3.5 uh, stereo jack connector from the outside like it is uh, possible on the reloaded mk1 mk2 ports so that's one thing um, that came up already and um, basically i'm considering building just one pcb with um, two different um, drillings so to say so that we can use this either for the ultimate 64 and in a different soldering for the mk2 so that we just need one blank and i'm thinking about using a different socket but that's not really affected by the pcb design so anyway that's the first thing and the second thing is going to be a little bit more complex and um, this is about running two fpgas it's on the ultimate 64 so basically the idea is the very same um, i have created a pcb that uh, gets all the signals from uh, the two sockets but here i decided to use the full range of connections just to have some let's say uh, in improved mechanical um, support whatever we want to call this and um, the main idea here is that we are not going to feedback the signal of the second sit emulated by each fpga sit to the board because we are running already two sits on it and therefore we feed back the signal of the first fpga sit sit one and the second fpga sit sit one to the uh, board but if we want to ex have access to an additional let's call it sit in summary four i created um, those four solder points and i forgot ground so that's uh, one reason why i have to change this uh, again so that we can simply create some kind of a breakout cable or something like this so that you got uh, let's say two stereo um, signals or two stereo connections getting outside of your ultimate 64 connected to your whatever door or mixer whatever you're going to use there and um, that's basically one idea then uh, we almost uh, came up with the very same thing um, extending this pcb to cover the sit tab connector as well to get more mechanical support for this pcb i kind of dislike the idea having cables connected to this uh, points going out of the c64 without any mechanical support so if you pull the cable or something like this you may break the adapter or break the connection something like um, in this direction so that's one thing uh, to consider or even to add two 3.5 stereo jacks um, to the board as well to have access to the stereo signal that's going to be pretty tight because there's not that much space left here i really have to check whether i can uh, squeeze this in and um, nd the creator of the fpjs it came up with the idea to um, kind of mix the stereo signals um, to some sort of mono signal and feed it back to the socket so that you have a kind of a stereo to mono down mix per fpga as a two sockets of the ultimate 64 that's an quite an interesting project but uh, i already did some drawings and um, it, this is going to be tight because we need some uh, little jumbos to configure the whole thing and uh, therefore we're running kind of out of space um, there is not that much, um, well, let's say, circuit on the PCB, but I need to route some of the signals through the connections um, of the sockets, for example. And uh, as you can see, I have used some uh, uh, circuit lines on the top as well as on the bottom. And there is, I think, somewhere a small uh, VAI, uh, for example, here as well. So. I'm actually not sure whether this is going to be a good idea or not. And um, basically that's the thought about this thing. 
And last but not least, there is an additional topic we need to address. And this is the availability of the address signals A5, A8 on the Ultimate 64. As you can see, I have modified my board, but I learned today um, by a good friend, call it Marco, thanks anyway for this, um, that this pin is directly connected to the FPGA on the Ultimate 64. So by um, connecting things to this pin, you may kind of screw up the FPGA uh, chip on the Ultimate 64. And this is not very, well, interesting to I think many of us and therefore I kind of picked up a, th a project or an idea I had a couple of months ago already uh, using some kind of uh, expansion port adapter and uh, that's basically quite a comfortable thing because all the signal we are looking for are available on the expansion port but unfortunately um, the connectors here are so tight that you have no chance to get a grabber like this connected to, let's say, the bottom line of um, connectors here because you have not enough space to go through it. And uh, the address lines are available exactly on <laughs> this line of um, connections here. But uh, by using an, F, uh, an expansion adapter like this, for example, We simply can um, solder um, wires to uh, the responding uh, responsible pins and therefore get the signals required to address the two second SIDs per FPGA. And um, the downside of this solution is that uh, this will perhaps be outside of the C64 or I'm considering creating a short very short PCB that's going to be um, that's going to look like this but the connector will be a much more closer to the board perhaps um, in a 90 degree angle so that you simply connect your cartridges from the outside as usual they just won't go as deep as usual into the case because of the adapter uh, but I think this is going to be a much uh, better solution than trying to get them somewhere from the board and um, this pin is providing either A5 or A8 anyway so we do not have both at the very same time and um, well yeah that's basically what what's actually in progress and uh, I think it's very very interesting I already um, did some testings with this adapter and it works very good, it works very fine and um, I think I uploaded a video to Twitter already about uh, changing the addresses and all that, that stuff on the Ultimate 64 and well yeah that's um, actually in progress. This is just something I'd like to introduce to you and if you have any ideas, comments, suggestions as usual Feel free to use the comment section and um, I'm looking forward to new input and probably I'm going to finalize the design by uh, this week so that I can order the next set of uh, PCBs so that we can have some progress here and um, we will see hopefully some more happy customers with FPGA sets on the Ultimate 64. So, As usual, thank you very much for watching and just as a kind of end of the video bye-bye scene I'm using my new camera setup and uh, well, I say thanks for watching see you for the next episode and bye-bye.